Hey folks, Sega Sonic fan here, just making a really quick video about why I developed the Virtual Ribbon, or at least part of the reason why. I've got a number of questions from people as to why the solder repair isn't, uh, you know, good enough. And while I don't have a unit that's soldered repaired right now, I'll probably get one over time, I definitely had somebody send me one that they tried to solder repair, but you'll notice that this, uh, stock cable is really flimsy stuff. Like, even by 1995 standards, I would say this is really flimsy stuff. But by 2020 standards, it's extremely flimsy. And as you can tell, you can like see through it, and it's... The, the big problem is, is the actual thickness of it, though, and the conductive material. Which, if we, uh, if we zoom in here, ain't looking so hot. Um... You can actually see some of the uh, copper oxidizing. Um, anyway, it's it's uh, <laughs> it leaves some things to be desired. And so what uh, Nintendo did was they they used an adhesive. They actually used two types of adhesive, which I guess is better than one. But uh, this one in the back, especially, uh, tends to go after a, a you know nowadays. And uh, and then they have an adhesive on the top, which is holding the ribbon cable down. Now the proper way to do this, of course, is to actually use a connector like this, which pops up and then you slot, you know, the ribbon cable in and you close it. Well, Nintendo just didn't do that. Um, they didn't, they didn't make uh, a connector for this board. And so any upgrade or repair that you're going to do is going to require soldering because there's simply no connector there and they don't actually make connectors for this pitch and size of the the pins that are here which is another kind of annoyance it would have been much nicer if they had kept the the length the same on both ends uh instead of shrinking it down and so that's uh that's another annoyance but um yeah, so kind of looking at the uh, the solutions that were out there, people were basically, um, what they were doing is they're melting, uh, using a chemical solvent to melt part of this existing ribbon cable, and then applying solder bridges across every single pin. Now, I'm not trying to knock anyone's work. I think it's been really cool that that's been available for some time for people to... Um, do a repair and it seems to be fairly affordable so like feel free to go that route if you want uh, but I wasn't really confident in that um, I'm not very confident in that being a long-term repair uh, especially because I plan on opening my unit to in install a virtual tap and I like you know I like modding stuff so I'll, I'll end up modding my unit for probably something else in the future and I want to have something that's just very durable. I can drop it, I can open it up and or send it in. You know, I, I, I'm, in my situation, I would repair it myself, but if someone wants to send it in for a future repair or upgrade, um, I don't want to have to worry. I don't want to have to worry about a 25-year-old really flimsy cable that's been patched as the only thing keeping my Virtual Boy working. So what I have here is in comparison the cable that I'm using in the Virtual Ribbon, and as you can see, this is a standard uh, flat flex cable, or FFC for short, and it's at least double the thickness. Like, it's a much nice, uh, nicer, stronger cable. It's not like transparent, doesn't have um, really, f you know, just, it's just much, much better quality. Uh, you can even see on the, uh, the connector itself where, um, where it's actually got the exposed metal. Let's see if I can get a better shot of this. But it's, uh, the one from 1995 leaves a lot to be desired. Uh, this part's actually a lot thicker and more sturdier as well. So the part that actually plugs in and, and plugs out is actually gonna be more durable and longer lasting. So, um, yeah. There's just a number of benefits. Uh, and then lastly, people have asked me, you know, why why have I made the virtual ribbon in a 90 degree angle? Why didn't I just make a, you know, something like this with maybe a, maybe a PCB here, like so, and call it a day? 
And there's a couple reasons for that. Uh, the, the biggest reason is, of course, durability. There is a pretty uh, short height distance uh, inside the Virtual Boy. And I didn't want something that's going to be pulling and rubbing the cable whenever you're adjusting that eyepiece. And if I'm going to go to all this work to design something, I want it to be really permanent. I do not like designing things that are going to be changed out in 5 or 10 years. So the reason for the 90 degree angle is it, it requires no stress on the ribbon cable itself and particularly no stress in that direction. That's what I was really trying to avoid, especially when you have a flip top connector like this. Um, you don't want to be stressing the cable, which would totally happen when you're turning the eyepiece. You don't want to be stressing it like that. And so if you can imagine this is actually going to be turned and you're moving the eyepiece like that. Um, I'll try to make another video later inside a unit, make a fancier video if people are interested. Because uh, I know I'm kind of like describing stuff instead of showing it, which I like to normally do. But uh, I just wanted to show this as uh, just sort of a basics video for why the virtual ribbon, you know, why is it 90 degrees and why am I using a new cable instead of the original one. And folks, I would not have bothered to design this if the existing cable was good quality. I wouldn't have bothered. Uh, it wasn't like a dream of mine to be making Virtual Boy modifications. Um, you know, I'm enjoying it. I do like the system a lot, but um, this wasn't like a, a project that I have been wanting to do or something. Uh, it happened out of necessity. And so, yeah, um, feel free to check out my website if you want to pre-order for the next batch of these that are coming in. Um, I'm going to be installing these ones for, for customers now. And I'll have more videos and instructions for the installation coming soon. So thanks for all your support, everyone that's been really, really nice. I mean, guys, the reason I, I'm, guys and gals, the reason I do this is because of how nice you are in the emails and appreciative of the, of the work that I do. So it really means a lot. And um, it's so cool talking to folks all over the world. And uh, yeah, these are going to Germany and Britain and Japan and all over. So uh, it's exciting. Repairing virtual boys. Thanks for checking out this video, segasonicfan.wixsite.com, and there'll be more to come. This is Sega Sonic Fan, signing out.